Hi, it's Will from StormTheCastle.com, and in th this is part 14 of the Sculpting Fantasy Miniatures tutorial. And here I want to show you, we're going to do the sword, the, both the swords, and here I'm showing you how I'm starting it out. I actually folded out a long flat piece of clay, and then I folded it right over the sword here. It's kind of hard to see, but I folded it over the tip. I started at the hand, folded it up over the tip, and then back to the hand. And what this does, it ensures that the clay totally covers the, the wire armature you have underneath. It's a nice little technique that I use, and it works really well. So now, an important technique that I wanted to show you in this part, in this installment of the, of the video tutorials, is when you have a, a, an object that protrudes like this, a sword or some kind of a weapon, um, it can be difficult to work with, so what I do is I use two um, flat tools. Put a tool behind it, then I put a tool in front of it. And that way the tool behind it supports it while you're working it. See, like this. So you put the tool behind it, then put another tool in front of it, and then you can flatten it out and start to get the shape you want. Now this clay is there's quite a bit of clay here. I will be removing a little bit as I go along, but I'm starting to make the sword get into the proper shape. So it's just a matter of constantly massaging that and starting to work the the edges and the flatness of it and getting uh, it into the shape of a sword. If you keep it reasonably straight, you won't have to worry about the wire armature sticking out at any point and that's why we folded it over. Now I've rolled out small pieces of clay and I'm going to be adding the guard to the sword. You simply put that on there and then press it in place and use a small sharp sharp tool to get it to, to stick really well. And Then we can wor further work on the shape of that with um, various tools. Yeah, I'm using some tweezers here. I'm going to manipulate it and keep working at it until I've got it into a nice shape, a guard shape, with the, with the quillions in each side. Now I'm using an X-Acto knife to make some lines in the sword. These are the blood lines in the sword and, I, and they make a, a great way for you to uh, start the shape and sharpness of the sword. I'm going to do two of them just off center because I want the center of the blade to actually be ridged. So I'm just taking my time here and I'm doing an exacto with an exacto just making some uh, cuts in that blade. So you use any kind of tools you want to use. Anything that works. You know an exacto knife. Now the side of the knife also is very effective too for um, flattening it out. So use um, various picks you can even use brushes, use your flats. See, yeah, I'm going to use a pick here to accentuate the that ridge in the in the in the sword. Now I'm using two tools to start to get the sharpness of the sword and bring it to a point. It isn't just for the flats of the sword; it's also to get the shape of the sides of the sword. So you can see, and I'll, I'll slowly get that to a nice point. And then these these sculpting tools are really nice for that because of the curves on them. Okay, I went ahead and did the rough shape of the sword on, in her left hand uh, just because I wanted to get that in before the clay started to set, before the uh, polymer started to set and I could work on it. But now I'm going to show you, I'm using the flat of, the, of an X-Acto here to get it nice a sharp look on this sides on the flats of this sword and I'm going to continue to work on that and I'll show you but the side of an exacto knife here or the side of a tool can give you a nice flat look and okay the sword is starting to take shape and you can see that I'm using the major technique that you're going to be using a lot when you're doing something like this of making sure you have it supported behind see now I'm starting to put the lines in this sword and I support it behind like that and that way I can push on it without distorting it too much the same thing goes for the same thing goes for the top and bottom of the sword like this you do the same thing you, um, you use two tools to shape that 
I'm just about done with these swords and um, I'm adding a little bit of detail work here now once you've got your rough shape and your, your various surfaces laid in the way you want you can start to add details and one of the nice details you can do is um, just simply dots just puncture little dots with a very sharp object sharp object here so I'm just making um, dots it kind of adds texture right along just along the base of the handle just along the, the base of the sword here and uh, so I'm just about done here okay I just wanted to show you here real quick um, the swords are just about done I'm gonna tweak them some more but I wanted to show you that the rest of the miniature is dry and hardened so this is a good point now to take to use some of your files and start to do some detail filing and shaping so it's never too late to um, continue to make that miniature just a little bit better shaped so that's what I'm going to do and I'm also going to do that with the swords once those swords are dry in say um, a few hours I'll probably let it sit overnight I can file those and get them looking even sharper so you take your time with that and so um, th th what I'm going to do is in the um, next chapter I believe is the next installment I believe is 15 I will um, prime it and paint it and then you can see it completed